Hey everybody, what's going on? My name is Sean Kenny with SeanKennyFilms.com and I'm a wedding videographer here in Northern California. I've been filming weddings since 2012 and in that time I have worked with hundreds of couples and filmed at some of the best venues in California and today I want to give you five tips to filming a better wedding video. So tip number one is arrive early. Now this is especially if you have not worked at this venue before. I would suggest arriving at least an hour before you're scheduled. That way you've got plenty of time to walk around the entire venue. You can also check in with the wedding coordinator, make sure everything is running smoothly and on time. And you can kind of get the lay of the land without feeling rushed. Arriving early is also a great opportunity to get some extra B-roll footage. I usually like to get at least five B-roll clips before my timeline even starts. That way, if I feel rushed later in the day, if the timeline gets changed, then I know I've already got something to work with. Also, you never know when you're gonna run into traffic, so it pays to arrive early. So tip number two is lock down your audio. Now, what do I mean by that? So I use multiple recording devices during the ceremony. I put one recorder on the groom, one on the efficient, and I also have a recorder going through the DJ soundboard as well. That way, if anything happens to any one of those recorders, I've got at least two others that are recording for me. In addition to that, always bring extra batteries for all of your recording devices, as well as bringing multiple cables. That way you can work with the DJ and his sound system or her sound system, depending on whatever they have. So bringing XLR cables, bringing RCA cables and quarter inch cables as well. Good audio can make or break your wedding film, so make sure that you don't skip out on good audio. Tip number three is get stable footage. By that I mean no shaky footage. Anytime I watch a wedding video and I can see the camera shake, or sometimes I can see when a warp stabilizer has been applied to a clip and you can see that weird warping effect, it just takes me out of the film and that is all I can focus on now. So make sure you're using tripods. I love using my monopod. I'm on a monopod at least 80% of the wedding day. And the only time I would say using handheld footage would be maybe during uh, dancing or unless you've got a very good internal stabilization built into your camera and lens simultaneously. It also helps if you're filming in slow motion as well. That way it can really reduce a lot of the wiggle and jiggle effects. But for the most part, make sure that everything is stable. So another great way to get stable footage and movement is to use a dedicated gimbal. Make sure you practice with your gimbal ahead of time before the wedding so that you have got it locked down and you know exactly what to do and more importantly, what not to do. Tip number four is don't forget to film the details. Now the wedding coordinator especially is gonna really appreciate having those shots of all the details during the ceremony and especially during the reception and cocktail hour. Now chances are the couple has been working with the coordinator for hours, maybe even days, picking out all the details of their table spread during the reception, what kind of glasses they're gonna use during cocktail hour, maybe monogrammed napkins as well. I strongly believe that filming all these details is really what sets each wedding film apart and makes each one individualized to the couple that you're working with. So make sure you get those details. It also just makes for great B-roll footage too for your wedding film. And lastly, tip number five is communication. Communication is so important on the wedding day. Make sure you are always communicating, not just with the couple, but with your photographer as well, and the wedding coordinator, and the DJ. I usually talk with the photographer throughout the entire day, making sure that we're both getting the shots that we need, that we're not in each other's shots as well, and we can then plan and coordinate where we wanna take the couple at what times, so that we're utilizing the couple's time efficiently. You also wanna make sure that things don't get moved up or moved back on the timeline without you knowing it. Unfortunately, sometimes this can happen and they may have just forgotten to tell you that something either got cut or something either got maybe even got moved up. And you always wanna be where you need to be so that you're getting everything on film. 
So again, it's so important to stay in communication, not just with the photographer, but the coordinator, of course, and that DJ. So I hope you guys found those five tips helpful. Like I said, I've worked with a few hundred couples in the last eight years, and I've gained a lot of experience in that time. So I really just wanna share that experience with you. So if you have any questions about filming weddings for the first time, or working with assistants, editing, color grading, music, sound, whatever it is, or gear, just let me know. I'd love to make a video for you guys. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.